How's Karuvia doing? Karuvia's been fairly quiet. I mean, they're slowly but surely expanding. He cannot handle it at all. Still a full week behind. Almost two. I wish I could see what was said in the interim, but I missed it, unfortunately. Is Frozen Moor growing dangerously fast? Yes, but Frozen Moor is currently under attack by Bjornrik. Bjornrik does have a pretty sizable army, and there is a battle going on up here at the moment, which Bjornrik is about to lose to Frozen Moor. Couple of territories occupied, including the capital, though. But Frozen Moor recruiting a couple more troops in the uh, background there. Frozen Moor with double the manpower that Bjornrik has, but Bjornrik is doing pretty well for money. Uh, so is Frozen Moor. Frozen Moor, no loans and actually making money at the moment. So I think it's going to depend on how they can bring troops together to go and fight against Bjornrik's uh, invasion over here in Coldwood and whether they can take the capital back again. Why did I stop playing and start commentating? Because uh, I couldn't make the first session last week. And they asked me to commentate. <laughs> like, I do enjoy Ambinar, but I find it's much easier to interact with chat if I'm not actually playing, because then I just go to, like, full focus mode. This way, at least, I can be, like, taking questions and stuff from you guys while also talking about what is happening in the game itself. I just find it works so much better for multiplayer. I like multiplayer. I like commentating probably more. It's much less stressful too. <laughs> so a couple more nations emerging over there. We can see that the Divine Vines has been taken by Neckliff. I do kind of wonder where Neckliff's going to go after this. Meanwhile, we can see that there is a large group of mixed separatists in Vestverton. And in fact, Eastverton has been taken. Oh no, this is all Nertaf, never mind. That's Eberthil. So it looks like they did manage to win the war against Mix. Now wondering if there's Warhammer mod for E4. Don't know. Have I played a game in West Island or not India yet? No. The closest I've come to West Elantir was playing Azusa Nexia, where I did fight against these guys. Hey, Republic of Play! Thank you very much for the raid. Welcome to the stream. Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing? What were you just playing? So, what's happening down here? So, oh, wait, have they formed something else? Varanhar. That's our player, right? Yeah. So, what's Varanhara? Van Raha. Whoa, okay, they're quite good. Morale of armies plus 20%, land leader shock plus 1, yearly army tradition decay minus 1, shock damage plus 20, infantry combat plus 15, monarch military skill plus 1, infantry cost minus 10, national manpower plus 15, harsh treatment minus 20, fire damage received minus 10. I think we've just found our Prussia. This definitely feels like a shock Prussia. No, you know what? This is Sweden. Van Rahari is uh, Sweden, because apparently the Swedes liked their uh, bayonet charges. Or maybe our uh, Napoleonic France. They also did common for column formation charges with artillery support. Nepal. Could be Nepal, too. That's true. Yeah, this is probably Nepal. You know, the, um, the Prussia of uh, the Indian Prussia. Since this is not India. Yeah, that's true. Okay, yeah, we've, we found our Nepal player. Now I see why they chose that one so they could form that nation. That makes sense. Anyway, for those of you just joining us, hello and welcome. My name is Mordred Viking, and this is a multiplayer game of European Infosilus 4 with the Anbanar mod. And what Anbanar does is it basically turns EU4, which is usually a historical game, into a fantasy game. 
where there are all kinds of different nations. So for example, we have got up here the gnomish hierarchy, which are gnomes. We've got humans, we've got elves, we've got half elves, we've got dwarves. Over here in the mountains, we've got centaurs. Uh, here, winged blades are centaurs. Magrama are uh, ogres. We've got the command, which are hobgoblins. We've got nolakas, which are gnolls. We've got um, harpies, currently taken out by the wood elves. Um, loads of different uh, factions and different nations. They all play in very different ways. So like the small country are halflings. Most of their armies are going to be down to mercenaries. Their mercenaries are very effective while the halfling military itself is kind of rubbish. Um, it's, it's really well done. It's really, really well done. So if you like European of Asalus 4, if you want to try a fantasy EU4, I heartily recommend Ambanar. It is it's really good. Don't forget the Nolish Wyvern Riders, true. Yep. The, the, the Emperor of the Human Realms right now is a Knoll. <laughs> because of course it is. Although I think he's about to get voted out. Nobody else is voting for Vern anymore. It looks like most of the votes are going for Westam again. These blue guys, which are humans. And Laurent has got their teeth kicked in once more. Small Country is still continuing their war against them. Karuvia's vampire, yeah. Karuvia is basically... Um, Sylvania in Warhammer. Vampire counts. Humans ruled by vampires. And we got some elves over here. And they're like, a big part of the story is this giant crater is because the elves blew themselves up. And then they fled their blown up territory and went to the uh, the human territories. And then over here in the Dwarven Realm, so if we actually switch to the terrain overview, we can see that this is actually mountains, and that's where the dwarves live. And that's represented in the game by these tunnels. Um, orcs and goblins rose up out of the shadows, wiped out the majority of the Dwarven territories. In fact, Verkul Gulin's back. Nice. And the orcs and goblins then rampaged across the human territories, which was all of this bit. Actually, it's more like this bit. Wiped all of that stuff out. Then the humans counterattacked with a bunch of adv adventuring companies, which is where this game starts. So the nations like Adenica and Elnor and the Order of the Black Scepter, these are all the human adventuring bands coming back in and retaking it. Then once the orcs had left the mountains, the dwarves started coming back. The holds which survived, like after El Kanzad over here, started to reclaim the tunnels, Ferkor Gulan, another one. And there are still some remnant orcs and goblins like these guys over here. These are the Rail Skulkers, those are goblins. Um, this was settled by orcs. Then you've got uh, dwarven adventurers coming from the dwarven holds, which were in the human realms, basically trying to take back the tunnels, which is what these guys are, Kugdir and the Silver Forge expedition. Um, so there, there's a lot of back and forth of uh, different nations and the rise and fall of different nations. It, it does a really good job of like modeling all of that. It's cool. And yes, it's inspired by Dungeons and Dragons. Not Warhammer. It's definitely D&D. And now we have the humans colonizing the old elven lands now that the magical fallout has basically faded. And soon we're going to have the Reformation. It still hasn't happened, but it's 1509 and I strongly suspect it's going to happen pretty soon. Is there no reform? No, there isn't. That's unity. So there is no reform progress yet, but definitely expecting the the reformation to, to hit fairly soon. And we're still in the age of the green tide. Soon we'll be switching to the unraveling, which will be the, the reformation. No chaos invasion in this, no. Unless you count the uh, the elves as chaos, in which case, yes, there is a chaos invasion. Okay, small country just finished their war against Laurent, taking some more of their halfling territories. Let's take another look at the great powers. So, unsurprisingly, Phoenix Empire is in first. Uh, Command and Dendraj are AI. Then Arakprun, Elisna, Malknar, Ebothil, and Sinvar 
are then fourth to eighth. So still six of the top eight are now players. And we can see that Eberthil and Vern have now embraced colonialism. Starting to expand into Durand, starting to expand into Conwell. And Anmancost has it already. So Conwell, are you colonial? I don't think you are. Nope. Anmancost isn't either. So the colonizers really are Vern and Eberthil. And I know the Gnomish hierarchy wants to get in on that. But he's not even exploring. Faceless, what are you doing? Elbin Bobman's just sitting here in port at the moment. Might want to be doing something with that, Vaseless. Uh, Bjarnrik still expanding. Looks like they won the war against Frozen Moor. And in fact, Vorenberg, which was the Frozen Moor capital, has just been taken by Bjarnrik. So the Vikings in the north are starting to stir. Meanwhile, Not India is once again at war with the Hobgoblins. Punitive war, so this is another show superiority. And these fights are really big. Like, we see, like, 20,000, 30,000 fighting in Ambanar. Like, ooh, that's a big fight. This one has 168,000 infantry against 102. 65,000 cavalry against 17,000. 43,000 artillery against 18,000. That's a big war. As basically all of these guys united against these guys. Neckliff's still in the game. Yeah, they are. Actually, I, I want to take another quick look at that cliff to see if they've sneakily snuck off somewhere else. They're seriously doing some colonization now. Yes, you've gone south. Good. See, I think this is a lot smarter because there's nobody else trying to colonize down here. So you can at least get yourself established. Whereas over here, you're just asking for trouble because these guys are already there as well. And also in the aisles, you're going to run up to trouble against them. I think going, trying to get as much of this as possible is much, much wiser. Go on, Neckliff. You can get back into this game. It might be looking hopeless. Your entire homeland has been taken by the perfidious emperor, the Nolish emperor. I'm just going to keep on saying that. Clearly the betrayer of mankind. Let's keep an eye on this because I want to see some of these big fights happening. Got a little battle going up on up there. But this is mostly just uh, large numbers of small armies just manoeuvring for position. This fight is getting bigger though. Got another 19,000 coming in to reinforce. Couple of little command armies nearby. Neckliff is human. Pretty sure just pure human. Jack. Human. Human military, human administration. And they also have orcish slaves. So they might get half orcs at some point. Oh, there's a big fight. 47,000 against 45,000 with more troops flowing in all the time. 75 against 75. 100% uh, morale on both sides. No, sorry, 100% discipline on both sides. The command side has got more morale and also more military tactics. Oh no, sorry. The Indian side has more m tactics and morale. And it looks like the command is about to be beaten. I think primarily because the uh, not India had the better Rahan had a better uh, backline half orc minorities so it looks like the command is also getting half orcs together with their goblins and hobgoblins you say knowledge emperor but did he actually switch no culture or is it just no military it's no military but it's the same thing that's a betrayal of those human roots I think it's a brilliant theme to place the command militaristic hobgoblin to Japanese theme between the dwarves and the Indian humans and tiger people. I agree. I think it's really cool. And I like how this is just like two big blobs just going at it. 
Um, even though like Ambinar is like super well developed and pretty high tech, you also have these these interesting pockets of other wars going on, which have clearly been around a while. Like these are going to be the interesting areas to look at in TK3 to say, okay, what was the rise of the command? How did the command come to be such a large unified position? How did they beat up three dwarven holds, which are by all means pretty big and pretty well developed? Like how did this happen? Where did they come from? And hopefully that's the type of thing that the CK3 version of this will cover. What's the Lake Federation? Lake Federation's Japan, basically. Facing off against the centaurs and the ogres. The best part of the command is how they make excellent target dummies for the Dwarven artillery, that's true. Like, once these guys, once Ofdal Kanzad gets going, the wars between them and them are flipping epic. Not to the same, like, scale of Rahan versus the command, but just the amount of damage that these guys do is just like, oof. Is there a China parallel? There is this, which is going to be fake China, but it's not in yet. So all of these areas which are empty, and you can see you have a zero, zero, zero in terms of development, they're uncolonizable. This is just like terrain set aside for uh, future development. It's kind of an interesting way of doing it because you can kind of see what's yet to come. So you've got all of this, which is not China. You have all of this, which is not Africa. And I think that not Africa is probably going to make the biggest difference because that's going to bring in the, the Nulls. And it's also going to bring in like alternate areas where you can expand and uh, colonize to. And then you have not Australia over here. There's a dev build with Not China on their Discord. Yeah, I mean, you can get the more advanced copies of this. I'm just keeping the, um, the Steam version because it's stable. Anyway, we should have about five minutes of this to go. So during that time, I will say, if you have enjoyed this and you want to see or participate in more multiplayer stuff, you should head over to our Discord where there is multiplayer content being organized constantly. My modernizers have done an excellent job with arranging the, the multiplayer stuff to come in the future. We have a Kaiserreich multiplayer game coming up. We've got this one which you can probably still join. Um, just be aware that we're now into the second session so things are already getting kind of divvied up between the different players. Um, and there was also a Hearts of Iron 4 vanilla game on Friday, and I'm sure there'll be more of those being arranged into the future. So if you head over to our Discord, which you can find at this link here, then you yourself can get involved with some of this multiplayer content and with the community at large. They're a very cool bunch. It's always a pleasure having some new people joining us too. What are we doing in the next stream? The next stream is going to be World of Blaze, which was the Hearts of Iron 4 community. So... Last weekend and the weekend before, there was a Heart of Iron 4 multiplayer tournament. And the victors of that was the World of Blaze community. I've never played World of Blaze, and it definitely piqued my interest. And it looks really cool. It looks really well fleshed out and developed, so I'm, I'm keen to give it a shot and see what it's all about. Kind of looks like a bit of a less intense Black Ice. And if it is a less intense Black Ice, I have a feeling I'm going to really like it. So I'm very curious to see what they've done with it exactly. I know very little about it. Would be hard to make an underground in E4. Well, funny you should say that because all of this is in fact underground. You can see here we have the mountains. And there are entire empires in the mountains. If we switch back to the, the regular map mode, you can see that these have these weird shapes. Those are tunnels. Then we have these ones, which are also weird shapes and interconnected. Those are caverns. And then interspersed with those tunnels and caverns, we have these rectangles, which are old dwarven holds, which are either already occupied or soon to be reoccupied, as the dwarves and the goblins and some orcs basically stir in the darkness. So there is already an underground. You can see it over here as well. And I'm sure in the future we're going to have an underground um, up here. This is also a large mountain range. 
Is it doable to conquer and colonize all the tunnels? Yep, absolutely. And in fact, I did it. There should be, I think, on YouTube, the Ovdal Kanzad game that I played, which was with these dwarves here, where I did just that. I, My goal was to re-establish the Dwarven Empire and reconquer it all, and I, I did. So if you want to see the process of how on earth this, this little guy starts out as just this one province, manages to do all of that, you should check out my YouTube, which you can find... I could spell YouTube, that would help. At that link right there. It's the Ovdal Kanzad EU4 Ambanar playthrough. So as we get to the end of this, Phoenix Empire is still very much in first place, then the command. Ebethil is now third, having taken the place of Drenaraj, Elisna, Arakpun, Drenaraj, Malaknor, and then Sinvar. But it does look like the command is getting absolutely buffeted by Not India. Not India actually making it almost to the mountains from which the command originated. With a pretty widespread occupation there. Have you split from them? Is that how you've established yourselves? No, you're still a Sintapi. Sintapti. How did you say that? Sinapti. Oh, come on, still got some pretty hefty forces back here in their fortifications. And of course, once the Indians... Sorry, once Haraf gets to these regions, then they'll be fighting in the tunnels with all the, the negatives that that encompasses. Minus two attack, minus one attack. Once they get to the holds, that's also a minus two. It's a very nice defensive area to fall back to. But losing all of this is going to be losing a hefty amount of development. But I have found in the past that these wars are very much back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> I just noticed, as the observer, I can change my own racial military. Ah, oh, it doesn't actually do anything, though. I want my dwarven military, damn it, even if I am the observer. Omniscient dwarves. Ah, oh, I can see it now. Terrifying. Terrifyingly awesome. Omniscient dwarves. Alright, so Neckliff is slowly but surely establishing themselves, and Great Bay is now their capital. So they have properly established themselves down here. Unfortunately, it's all going to be a horrible tropical jungle to colonize, which is going to be difficult. They probably want to move over here and grab that. But having just the island... And in fact, if this gets invaded, then all of their enemies are going to have the minus one as well. So there we go. But we're definitely starting to see the consolidation of the uh, the various nations, like the fact the Wood Elves have fully consolidated. Phoenix Empire has definitely got their uh, main bastion. Magrama taking out and uniting all of the other ogres. Bjornrik taking out the north, moving into Frozen Moor. Small country taking much of the, uh, the halfling territory, but not all of it. The gnomes establishing the hierarchy. Karuvia getting a nice... Eastern Bastion, Ebethil, taking out the entirety of uh, North Africa. Elisna, establishing themselves in not Egypt. What an extremely fitting name for the capital of Nekliff, the Admiralty Tag. That's true, yeah, Great Bay. You're not wrong. Do they actually have that yet? No. They need the Nekliff or Admiralty. Which is a decision? How do they get that? <laughs> Snarky J, thank you very much for the donation. Let me just check that out. Unfortunately, in my preview, it appears absolutely minuscule. Give me just a second, I'll bring it up. Yeah, man. Just wanted to thank you for your Hearts of Iron 4 beginner videos. They have been a great resource to help me come to grips with the game. Thanks for all the great content. Very much appreciate that. Thank you. Very, very generous. And I'm glad that the uh, tutorials have been of use. Um, 
of course, I have the Hard to Find for tutorials. I have tutorials for European Universalis and also Humankind. So lots of different strategy stuff that you can get into. Anyway, this would seem to be the end of this session, so I'm going to have to bring it to a close. Uh, I'm going to go and talk to the uh, the players for just a minute or two, and then I will have to duck out. Um, so be aware it's going to get noisy, as I haven't balanced the voices. My god. Four this time. The southern rune bore all united almost under one person. Wait, they are? Oh, yeah, there's yeah. a player down there. Oh, is there? Yeah. Yeah, and the, the, oh, the Greek elves. The Aurelium, Aurelium player. I thought there was only one in the north. Well, I'm happy to see that Necklift lives, still. <laughs> no, <you should laughs> barely. Uh, uh, my you should barely. You really shouldn't have goaded into him into doing that, because... Uh, I poor, mean, I, poor guy. I, I wanted to do it before, but I was like... Uh, and then I was like, yeah... Fuck it, and let's um, go. Well, worst uh, not exactly faring well, so I think he may have do dodged a bullet right there. But uh, West Ham's also in line to become, you know, greater. Dead. Ow. Greater. <laughs> Ow. Become stronger in death than you were in life. That's what a necromancer Sorry. would say. Yeah, true. <laughs> well, at least uh, West Ham isn't being, you know, chased by a certain <laughs> player who really wants to see him dead. <laughs> yeah, Ebithil is hunting him down. I'm surprised I'm still alive. So yeah, Dark Fighter, you, you fought one Ooh, hell of a fight. Yeah. I was enjoying that. It's a great little story there. At the last battle, um, I could only win because the Tech 6 Goblin Nation wanted a white piece, a separate white piece. And after that, I took all of the shock damage bonus missions and teched up. And I smashed their army back into their land. Yeah, I saw well, that going from the, the verge of defeat to like a glorious victory in which he took a bunch of stuff. That that was it cool was to watch. Very satisfying full annexing them. I mm. bet. <laughs> I bet, yeah. And you were really well positioned over there. The the struggle for the uh the uh, the, the mountains is gonna be fascinating. In fact there are a couple of areas which are very much friction points that are gonna be really, really fun to see what happens. Did you yeah. see what happened yeah. between uh it was fun playing between the water finally did something helpful for me. I did got a hold of mithril so I can steal it from them. Hell, I beat the living shit out of them and then allied them afterwards. <laughs> oh, I didn't notice you allied. That's funny. Yeah, I saw you went after Anbanland, and I saw yeah. that Adenica kept all of his forces right at the back of the country. I thought, okay, you guys have come to an agreement. <laughs> the next thing I saw was you're occupying his capital. Yeah, I just walk in and, and I was like, okay, take running. the money. Take it. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> Take everything you want, just leave me alone. <laughs> I call yeah. that a good war. Yeah. What was your opinion of Mind Boy? What happened to him? I think it's very unfortunate, and I very much applaud the fact that Mind Boy is still fighting on. Shows good character. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the, the, the great return. Neckliff's hordes ravishing uh, Vern and taking Vern out and getting their adequate revenge. Well, that would be fun. Mm -hmm. Wait. Not see it happening, but it would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've never seen Mind Boy actually uh, return to the mainland after running to the colonies. Well, this will be a first then. No, don't worry about it. It's a mm. goal. Don't worry about it. So anyway, going to form a massive empire. I'm going to have to duck out. So thanks everyone for playing. It's been awesome. Absolutely love watching this. And uh, same again next week, I think. Yeah. Play next yeah. week. Yep. No, see you next week then. See you next week. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. See you. And that is going to be it from me as well. So thank you everyone for watching. I do hope you have enjoyed this. If you have, be sure to hit that follow button to get notifications when I'm live again in the future. If you've really enjoyed this and you want to support the channel and everything I do, then do check out the Patreon, which you can find at patreon.com slash mordredviking, or you can, of course, subscribe here on Twitch. I do have a YouTube channel where you can find uh, more content like this, like the Ofdal Kanzad series that I was just talking about, and also the Laurent series, the, the, the previous multiplayer where I was playing as these purple guys, the burgundy guys over here, Laurent. Uh, you can find that on my YouTube, which is at youtube.com slash mordredviking. If you wish to join the community and maybe participate in these games yourselves, then you can find that on my Discord, which you can find at the link which I will put into chat now. So we've got Patreon, the Uptubs, and the Discord. Then... 
we have a Kaiserreich multiplayer game coming up in the next couple of weeks, probably starting next week, probably on Friday, though that is still being determined. And there is a nation selection open at the moment. So if you want to participate in a game like this yourself, then you do need to go check out our Discord and you can find all the details you will need over there. We are going to go and raid someone. Just going to go and see who is live at the moment. And... Is there anyone else playing Andenor? Because that would be nice to raid if we could. Actually, absolute Habibi is. I could raid him. He's also doing multiplayer. That would actually seem to be perfect. Wait, is he doing multiplayer? Actually, I'm not sure if he is. Let's see where in the world he is. That is not Ambanar. <laughs> oh, he's saying Ambanar is over. No, that, that's a regular game. Okay. Is anyone else doing Ambanar? Does not look like it. Hilarito. I was looking for other people to uh, raid who are playing uh, Ambanar, but nobody seems to be. So instead, we're going to go and raid Templin, because Templin is awesome and he is playing some humankind. So let's head on over and say hello. I'm surprised he's playing humankind, not Age of Empires. So head on over there, say hello from Mordred Viking. I'd love to see his chat absolutely lit up by the Viking raid, which you can do by copying and pasting Viking raid, which will be just like this or if you're a subscriber you can bring in the long ships which you can bring in like this i'll be back again one hour from now so 10 p.m this evening for some hearts of iron 4 we're going to be playing worlds of blaze which is the mod uh which the guys who won the tournament last week were representing so i'm very excited to get stuck into that and see what it's all about in the meantime thanks everyone for watching and i'll see you all next time until then bye bye